previous video, we discussed about the fermentation, the electron balance with aerobic growth. Now, what if there is an extracellular product involved? So, when you have an, an extracellular product, so your reaction equation will look like this. So, you have your, again, the carbon source, you have the oxygen for aerobic. If this is an aerobic system, you have the nitrogen source, and then this is your biomass, carbon dioxide, water, and of course, here is your extracellular product. So, there could be one, two, or more extracellular product depending on your system. So, here, we just simplify it out, just one product. So, if there are two products, you have another value here. So, you can have the G and then that uh, product. So, C, M, L, M, N, then H, O, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's for the product. Now, for your yield, so we have your, as, uh, just like the biomass yield. So, you have the product yield from the substrate y product yield from the substrate so that's y ps so this is your the grams or the amount of product form per mass of the substrate consumed this is equal to f times molecular weight of the product over molecular weight of the substrate Consi um, which is actually similar to the biomass yield the only difference is that you have f here which corresponds to your coefficient the coefficient for the substrate instead of c for the coefficient of the biomass now for the electron balance you just add the term for the uh, for the product so remember this is f j gamma p unlike the the one a while ago which is just c gamma b c gamma b because there's only one always we always express the biomass elemental formula as one carbon only and then you have your product for the product it can be two or more carbon so depending on what your product is for example if it's acetic acid you have two carbons there so j is the number of carbon f is the coefficient for the product so this is conventional so i do suggest that you use this conventional approach although you can make your own values but um well, if uh, I'm using, since I'm using this um, conventional rule, you might have a difficult time translating my conventional values or my conventional uh, preferred variable letters to your own preferred variable letters. But anyway, it's your own choice. So this is your, anyway, this is your electron balance. Now, since we have a product, so we have uh, a uh, the concept of a maximum yield. So, what is the maximum possible yield? So, because if you look at it closely, your mass balance equation, you have your, if we, um, if we, this is negative, so if we just write this one on the other side, so we transfer the negative 4a to the other side, so you have here plus 4a. So, that means the only term on the right side, on oh, sorry, on the left side is W gamma S, and that's actually the source of all the electrons. So your uh, your equation will tell you this um, this equation now will tell you that uh, the source of all the, the electrons in your aerobic fermentation reaction is actually your sub uh, your substrate. So it's the, the source of all. So the electrons therefore is partitioned to your oxygen. As the, of course, it's uh, it's a respiration, so it's the final electron acceptor in the respiration. And then part of that is given for the formation of biomass, and another part of that is given for the formation of the product. So the, the amount of electron uh, provided by the, uh, the substrate is partitioned to those three. So what if, how do we get the maximum? So what if it's the only one that is considered? So let's just uh, divide everything so put all of them in the right side of the equation so you end up with one is equal to four a over w gamma s so divide everything by w gamma s so you have your this is considered a fraction so you have one here basically 100 percent this is 100 percent of the electrons available in your system it is partitioned into the three parts this is your respiration this respiration, this is your biomass, uh, growth of the biomass, and this is for the formation of the product. So, to get the maximum possible yield, we, we can consider that what if 
all of the others, for example, what is the maximum biomass yield? So what if there is no, um, ther- just theoretically, if there is no oxygen that is siphoning off the electrons or sharing with the electrons, there is no product sharing the electrons. So your 100% of the electrons from your substrate will only be um, given to your biomass. So this is your maximum possible biomass yield. So this is in the absence of product formation. Now, on the other hand, what if you have your maximum possible um, product? So the same goes for that. So you have your, you remove all all else. So you remove your, of course, oxygen. And then if you want to maximize the product, so you assume that your cells, your your little workers on the fermentation system is not reproducing so they're just working and creating products so one is equal to your is solely uh, 100 percent of the electron is solely given to the product formation so this is the fraction so the fraction for the product so you have the fraction for the product uh, so product product p is equal to this is f j gamma p over w gamma s and this is equal to 1 so the maximum possible biomass uh, sorry maximum possible product yield now is that if we get the f so we just isolate the f from here if, the, if we if we remove everything and then equate this one to one we isolate f so this is your maximum possible product yield so f max so that's the maximum amount of products that your fermentation system can form based on your available substrate if you do not consider respiration and uh, biomass formation. So let's have an example. So the, the product yield in anaerobic digestion, so anaerobic digestion of volatile acids by methane bacteria is represented by this reaction. So you have acetic acid, CH3COOH, with this is anaerobic respiration so you do not see an oxygen there but you have your ammonia as the nitrogen source you form the product uh, the biomass carbon dioxide water and uh, methane so the composition of the methane bacteria is approximated by the empirical formula ch 1.4 o 0.4 and 0.2 so there is no um, there is no given ash percent ash so that you can assume that the ash is negligible so for each kilogram of acetic acid consumed, 0.67 kg of carbon dioxide is evolved. So how does the yield of methane under these conditions compare with the maximum possible yield? So analysis again, so we start with your reaction equation. So this is your reaction equation with your product. So your product is methane. So given is the, the yield. So you have 0.67 kg of carbon dioxide. So this is a different way of uh, stating the yield. So instead of YPS or YXS, you are stating the yield per kilogram of carbon dioxide. So the, the, the modified yield formula, so this is also considered a yield because, well, technically speaking, carbon dioxide is actually a, one of the products, which is just considered a waste product. Anyway, so this is the yield of the carbon dioxide in the substrate. So you have your just um, use D times molecular weight of CO2 over molecular weight of substrate is equal to the yield of the carbon dioxide of the substrate. So from here, we can get the value of D. How do we get that? We just calculate the, the molecular weight of carbon dioxide. It's easy enough. As well as the substrate, there is no ash involved. So just get the molecular weight based on this elemental formula. So you have 0. 0.915 value for D. So that's this, this the coefficient of carbon dioxide. Now, we do elemental balance. Although you can do electron balance if you want. So actually, it's all, it's all in your, all your choice. So bahala ka. Your own, uh, do your own thing. But I want to do elemental balance this time. So since we do not have an A, so it's a bit, I, I, said, I guess it's a bit, it should be a bit easier. So anyway, so I already have D. And then oh, another reason why I chose elemental balance here is that D, the carbon dioxide is not counted in an electron balance. If you notice, in the electron balance, we just consider the substrate, the oxygen, the biomass, and the product. So we have, we know now the D, 
but we cannot we won't be able to use it if unless we do elemental balance so that's one of the reasons so actually what whatever rocks you whatever um, propels your boat do it okay so you have the carbon balance so the carbon balance so we have two carbons one two is equal to c plus d which is 0 0.915 and then f so we can um, express f in terms of c so f is equal to 1.085 c then hydrogen balance so i'll just leave it as is for a while there are a lot of terms there and then for the electro uh, the oxygen balance well it's a good thing we do not have the a so the oxygen comes from acetic acid only so we have two oxygens Sorry, two oxygens in acetic acid. So, 2 is equal to oxygen here is 0 0.4C plus 2D and plus E. So, it's just C and D, but we already know D. So, we just get C. So, E in terms of C, you have E is equal to 0 0.17 minus 0 0.4C. And then, for, finally, for the nitrogen balance, in term, B is equal to 0 0.2C. So, we have here the variables in terms of a single variable so all of them in terms of c but except for d we already know d so just substitute it on the hydrogen balance we left around a while ago and then so this one here and then you calculate it so you substitute everything so 4 is equal to 3 times the b is 0 0.2 c is equal to 1.4 c plus 2 times your e is 0 0.17 minus 0 0.4 c and your F is 1.085 minus C. So all of them in terms of C, you get the value of C. And to simplify everything, since we are not asked to get all of the coefficients, we are just we just wanted how this the the product yield compared with the maximum. Well, we'll just look for F. Let's not punish ourselves. Okay. So let's have F. F is equal to 0.991. So, that's the coefficient of F. So, that's per mole, mole per mole basis. So, you have F, this value of F is actually 0.915 mole per mole. What mole per mole? Moles of your methane per mole of your acetic acid. And our maximum possible yield from our equation a while ago, so you have W gamma S over J gamma P. So, W, we have two carbons. And then, what is the... Uh, the reduc uh, degree of reduction of your substrate. So, easy enough. Just calculate it. So, 4, four for carbons, 1 for hydrogens, and negative 2 for oxygen. So, ending up with 4.0. And then, for the degree of reduction of your uh, uh, methane, so 4 plus 4 hydrogens times 1. So, you get 8. So, J, J corresponds to the number of carbon in your product, which is 1. Methane has 1 carbon. So, just plug it in the equation, you get 1.0. So, if we get it in terms of percent, so our actual yield, based on the, the, the system itself, the given, you have 0.915 mole per mole. This is the actual yield of your um, methane per mole of substrate. But the maximum is 1.0. So, how, how, how about is the percent of that? So, just get divided by the maximum times 100, you get... 91.5% as the theorette as um, your that means your yield the production of methane is 91.5% of the theoretical maximum in your system so that's your final answer okay so for um, the next one why not uh, practice so practice using this one so well it's supposed to be a seat to work in a face-to-face -face classroom but do this one and we will be discussing this on our video conference next time. So, see ya. So, that's it for the lecture.